you. Hey, it's me, the mouth of the sound, Jimmy Hart. Hey, check out my new tag team, baby, Money in the Foul. Hey, Jimmy, don't forget to tell them about Long Island's number one pro wrestling broadcast. Well, you know what, I would, but you already did it. It's Monty and the Pharaoh. With Monty and Pharaoh. The Monty and Pharaoh show. Monty and Pharaoh, bro. Monty and the Pharaoh. Monty and the Pharaoh. The Monty and the Pharaoh. The Monty and Pharaoh show. And you're watching the Monty and Pharaoh show. Monty and the Pharaoh. Monty and the Pharaoh. It's Monty and the Pharaoh. 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 Monty and Pharaoh. Monty and Pharaoh. Monty and the Pharaoh. And Monty and the Pharaoh. Oh, is it Monty and the Pharaoh? Yeah. Monty and Pharaoh. The Monty and the Pharaoh show. Monty and the Pharaoh. To the Monty and the Pharaoh show. And it's Monty and the Pharaoh, baby. Monty and the Pharaoh. With Monty and the Pharaoh. Monty and the Pharaoh. Oh. What a run! Monty and the Pharaoh. Monty and the Pharaoh. Hey, cut the fucking music. When you want the best in professional wrestling, Long Island, there's only one place you're gonna get it, right here. Monty and the Pharaoh. <laughs> now that's not just the coolest, and that's not just the best. That, my friends, is just <laughs> incredible. <laughs> You've got the future Hall of Famer, that rocker, Marty Jannetty, MJ in the house, and I'm sitting here with two more future Hall of Famers, Monty and the Pharaoh. We're doing that stuff and we're going to rock it. Monty and the Pharaoh. Duh. All right, welcome to Long Island's number one pro wrestling broadcast, Monty and the Pharaoh, seen only here out of Indie Music TV in Ronkonkoma, Long Island. A special Saturday edition with a very special guest, but first I want to welcome Matt back for a second show. Brother, how are you? Great as always. How'd you like that demolition interview? I thought it was uh, pretty good. Yeah? Yeah. How, how about you, Pharaoh? I loved it. Forth going on. Oh. Would Didn't you rather demolition script? makeup or no makeup? Makeup or no makeup, yeah. I'm cool either way. I thought I would I would mark out for the makeup, but it was great to have them either way. And what'd you think, Matt? With about the makeup? Yeah. Well, I they weren't been, wearing it. Did you? Yeah, had I, you wish they had? <laughs> what did I, he say? I them? have no idea. Anyway, <laughs> it's been a long day. You guys didn't follow the script at all. <laughs> <laughs> well, and it's been a long day, and at oh, oh, the day is. That's great. Is one of the greatest wrestlers of all time, Mr. Nikita Koloff. Nikita, thank you for joining us, sir. I appreciate you being here. I appreciate the invite here into the Big Apple, and I'm listening to your conversation, and I just want to bring a little clarity here to my knowledge. Uh-oh. Um, I don't know if Axe and Smash corrected you or not, but those guys don't wear makeup. They wear face paint. Oh, you that's just for the record. Dude, that okay. is true. That, okay. You know what? Thank you for correcting me. <laughs> so wait a minute. Does that mean Kiss wears face paint instead of makeup? Yeah. Oh, sorry, Gene Simmons. <laughs> uh, I was going to say, yeah. Hey, maybe, maybe some of the rock and rollers wore, wore makeup. But, uh, okay. But the, but the demolition, face paint. So what did you think of that movie when you first came to New York? Dude, where's my car? Say that again? <laughs> yeah, sorry. He's referring to is our, our first introduction, Nikita Koloff meeting Monty Nefaro. <laughs> we picked up Nikita out of the airport, and of course, in Monty Nefaro fashion, we couldn't find our car. What were your we, thoughts, Nikita? What was going through your that head? That was great! We, we did wander the parking lot he thinks for we're a idiots. while hey. until we got some assistance. So, right. I mean, I, right. you know, blessed are the flexible for they will not break, and <laughs> I figured eventually... Your car is going to turn up somewhere at some point. Right. At some time. And it wasn't stolen. And it was only a matter of time. Right. Yeah, I was pretty confident it wasn't yeah. stolen. Yeah, I was so. wondering. I was wondering. And you, you were thinking it was well, stolen. Well, you wound up going up to the wrong floor. I'm like, we were, we're not on that floor. And you're like, hit you the keys, no, yeah, see if it, it makes noise. He's like, we're on the third level. 
You were right. Yeah. You were right. Wait a right. minute. With all due respect, the guy who was leading me like a sheep, okay, told me we were on the wrong level. So I followed him like a sheep to the next level. Well, let's back up. We actually... We actually couldn't find the parking deck to start with. So let's bit. Okay. Fair now that we lose the car, we also lost the parking deck. What about the, What about wow. when we walked to the rim and there was nothing left but street? That was great. I was like, I think we went to the side. Yeah. That would be my point. That was, yeah, that was, that was, I didn't realize we were talking about the same dead end. Oh, my so God. How many dead ends did we hit finding this car? But then once we found the parking lot, oh, that was great. we had a little challenge locating the car. Wow. So, and then, but hey. Hey, we're we were, here. well, wait, it doesn't, wait, it doesn't end with that. No. We have to stop to have something to eat. Right. And Super Agent Eric F Sims. Yeah. Upsets the owner of the yeah. restaurant. Yeah. So we're just, we're having a great day. Yeah. That the restaurant owner says the to The bathroom was closed. Closed the bathroom yeah. on him and says, please never return to my facility yeah. again. Well, you know what? <laughs> It all it's works going itself up. out. Here we oh, are. yeah. And here we are. You're Nothing right. like effective prayer, I always say. <laughs> Come on. Oh, my God. Thank God. So, so, like, we found the car. This is true. We made it here. here this is are. true. How are you handling the world now with we, COVID, all the politics going on and issues? What are the thoughts in Nikita Koloff? You know, I just... I've learned really just to roll with, roll with, with, with whatever, uh, you know, whatever's coming at me from day to day. Um, it was, it was interesting several months because, because of what I do travel main thing I do, you know, I'm here this weekend with you guys hanging out, meeting wrestling fans, signing autographs. I'll still, you know, occasionally do that from time to time. I enjoy doing that. Uh, I love meeting the fans, hearing their stories. Um, but the main thing I do is 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 ministry. In fact, Lex Luger and I just wrapped up um, a, uh, a men's event, what we call Man Camp, and where we facilitate one, a couple of these a year, one in the spring, one in the fall. And so the shutdown, um, in a sense, shut me in for – really about five months from about March 1st to really about about August 1st. And so for someone who travels and, and, and my livelihood is speaking and ministering and doing conferences and camps and those sorts of things, it, it, was, it was a pretty interesting time. I, I wasn't really challenged by it. What I did, how I, what I did to take advantage of that is really just... Some called it um, what they call it, stay home, isolate, whatever, whatever term. I, I didn't call it isolate. I called it incubate. Mm -hmm. In other words, I spent a lot of time listening to sermons and worship music. I mean, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours in preparation, knowing I was going to eventually get back on the road again and begin to speak again. So I just took advantage of it to just better prepare myself when those doors of opportunity open back up and they have. So, yeah, so uh, you'll find if you have, if you spend much time around me, you'll find, uh, or many would, would say I'm what's called an eternal optimist. So no matter how negative it might get or no, no matter how black a cloud you might bring me, I'm going to do my best to somehow, some way, Find a silver lining in that black cloud. You knew we were going to find that car. <laughs> Just he I knew. knew. He knew. I, I this knew. Is what I so, so I, you know, I, I don't think things don't typically uh, things don't typically get me down, and, and and including all this crazy stuff going on around us right now. Well, I, I was thinking about you during the signing. Uh, you were at Wrestling Universe, one of the best pro wrestling stores go. around. You See go. them in Queens, and they're opening up a store in Comac. But I was actually thinking you, right? Because, you know, you're here. You're under the Monty and the Pharaoh banner this weekend, uh, along with Captain's Corner. But I was thinking about you as a human being because you impressed me. Our conversations, the short conversations we had in the car. But these fans, they come to see you. It's, you've been out of wrestling a very long time. Mm -hmm. What was the most moving situation you had from wrestler to fan? Not on the religious end, just wrestler to fan. 
You mean are, are you you mean a fa- like a fan store? What, no, like no, no. Fans comes to see you, gets an autograph, right? Yeah. And a lot of times, yeah. look, Farrell on occasion, if you see someone that he loves, he'll cry. Yeah. It's happened. Look at you. It happened with Greg Valentine. <laughs> it did um, not happen with Greg. He was, in te- he was in tears over Valentine. He was crying. An instigator and a masturbator. <laughs> well, Val- 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 Valentine will will put. Yeah, he'll 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 make you. He'll put. He can put tears. Well, in he that. made me eat Mexican. That right. made me cry. So my my point right. is, a fan comes, they Never see mind. you. Okay, yeah. look, you are an icon in the sport. Yeah. Period. Yeah. yeah. What moved you? To, did you ever have a moment where something moved you? And you know, I. The reason I bring this up is, and I, I just feel like I have to say it, we had a friend in high school who passed away at yeah. a very early age. Yes. But I was telling you a story on how he saw you and mm-hmm. you changed his life. He began working mm-hmm. he well adored with weights. <laughs> he you adored know, you. And again, being a Northeast <laughs> guy, WWF did. guy. Yeah. Which, mm-hmm. you know, that that was a big stamp yeah. of approval. Sure. Yeah. And oh, when yeah. I first met you at the airport... All I could think was him. Like I wish he was here. What a good soul he for was for this moment. Good so guy. then I started thinking about what has moved Nikita Koloff. One incident where you were like, you where, know. where you saw the affection from a fan towards you and your character, and you could tell how much they loved you. Did you ever have any particular incident that blew your mind? Well, I, I've I've had nu- numerous stories uh, that have been shared, certainly over the years, and but even recently within these last six months um in, in fact what i did was uh, again in taking advantage of this time this downtime i decided to uh work on a revision of my last book nikita a tale of the ring and redemption which is my life story and so i wrote about seven or eight new chapters to bring it up to date mm-hmm. but then i got this idea you know all these all these fans a lot of people sitting home and so I just posted something out on Twitter and Instagram, social media, and I just said, hey, if you have a story of how my life, some way, whether my wrestling career, maybe I sp- spoke in a, a school assembly that one time with, that you, you, you were in that assembly, or I spoke in a church service or at a conference or something, um, send me your story. And I, I had, I'll just tell you, some pretty amazing stories that came back to me and what I'm doing with some of those stories is I'm including them in the final chapter of the book you know so the book's about is my story right Mm -hmm. but the last chapter I think we're just going to call it your stories that's awesome and so I'm including a lot of fan stories cool in the final chapter of the book um and just at to your question to show how one how much I appreciate all the stories I'm hearing, and how I've been fortunate to impact people's lives, mm-hmm. and everything from like your friend because of you, Nikita, uh, I got into weightlifting. Mm-hmm. You know, because of you, Nikita, I got into professional wrestling. I mean, I've met numerous young guys that were inspired to get into professional wrestling because of my career. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, because of you, Nikita, you know, this happened, that happened. So there's a myriad of stories, but I'll, I'll pique the curiosity of, of your viewers by saying, hopefully by the end of the year, that, that revision will be will be ready uh, ready to, uh, to purchase. And then, who knows, maybe some of your viewers will see their story in print mm. in the book. Mm. And at very least, get to see and or read some of the ways uh, my career has impacted other people's lives. Well, well done. And that was not scripted, by the way. That was straight from mm-hmm. the top. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Road Warrior Animal passed away recently. Thoughts on Road Warrior? Yeah. Uh, you know, like many, I suppose, I mean, you know, uh, very surprising. His wife had reached out to me just, but I don't know, 10, 12 days prior, I think a couple weeks prior to that, just randomly and, and said, hey, you know, Joe's 60th birthday's coming up. I'd like to surprise him. Would you shoot shoot me a video, you know, happy birthday uh, video to him? And, you know, of course, I mean, Joe and I go back to 1978. Mm. I think I was sharing with you guys or some of the guys that 
when I went to the funeral service, other than his brother John and his brother Mark, I looked around that room, kind of dawned on me, I pro I, I've known him longer than anybody else in that room, mm. with the exception of his two brothers. Wow. And and I guess, you know, the, the number one thing is it just lends itself for all of us to understand, you know, that mortality is, is a reality and, and there is no promise of tomorrow. You know, we do what we can or I do what I can to, to take care of myself, exercise, eat, work out, you know, and, and do the things I I feel uh, I, I'm within my control to do. But still realizing that that there is there is no promise of tomorrow and and, and so these sorts of things happen um i posted a, a a magazine cover shot it was interesting it was ivan and i wearing the nwa tag team belts and animal and hawk wearing the awa mm. tag team belts and i asked the fans i go i go hey what do you what do you notice about this this magazine cover and I think only one or two pointed out the fact that I'm the sole survivor of that cover at this mm. point mm. that that the other three have have all passed on so well we know what Ivan uh, you know obviously meant to your career as a wrestler can you tell us how much Ivan meant to you as a, as a person yeah we became I mean you know and people ask you of course they still ask believe it or not to this day, you know, she really your uncle or, hey, your brother, your brother Ivan or your cousin, you know, they, they all kinds of things, right? I'm like, all right, it all works. But, um, you know, was he really your uncle? And I'm like, well, he was in TV land. However, uh, he was as much an uncle to me as any uncle I ever had because he certainly, he was instrumental, him and Don Kernodal and helping uh, teach me the, the ropes, you know, pun intended, uh, of wrestling and and we became we became close friends uh, outside the ring and and spent uh, a lot of time together even really right up to his passing and his wife she wanted a very uh, private um, graveside service and asked if I would you know you know be the essentially the main speaker which I was certainly wow honored to do that wow and there might have been, I don't know, I think she invited maybe 25 people, not many. Mm -hmm. So just those who are really close, family and then friends who are really close. Um, and so it was it was quite an honor. And and, and again, I, nothing but just incredible things, thoughts when I think about Ivan and, and all that he accomplished, certainly inside the wrestling ring. Did, but even, even what he did with his life post-wrestling. Did Ivan reach out to you towards the end, maybe to talk about God and maybe get some mm. clarity towards the end? To, you know, because I know you you preach the word and. Uh... Yeah, well, it wasn't. It wasn't towards the end. It was actually. Um, so I get my so I get my life to Christ, seventeen October, nineteen ninety three. Farrell's birthday. I your birthday. I have to throw that in. Your your birthday. Your birth. We we sh we share we share birthdays. There you go. And uh, <laughs> and so. There you go. <laughs> And then I was, there we go. And then I was, uh, uh, in 1995, I, I got connected with a, an evangelist out of South Africa and and began to uh, really just be mentored by him. And and I just, I, I felt impressed to call Ivan and, and invite him. Uh, this evangelist was doing revival services in North Carolina. And so I, I, uh, I reached out to Ivan. I, I remember it was, I reached out to him on a Monday and I knew that the evangelist was going to be there all week and just invited Ivan. I didn't know he was at the service uh, until the end of the service when the evangelist gave what somebody knows an altar call. Uh, and there was Ivan standing at the altar. Really? Um, surrendering his life to Jesus. That was really? 1995. Okay. And it was the real deal. And by that, I mean prior to that, Ivan, by his own admission, and even in books and videos, you know, would admit that he, he, he had drug addictions, you know, tobacco addiction. I mean, he was a big chewer. He he drank a lot of alcohol, ran around a lot or whatever. But you know what? On that night, kind of like 
those who are familiar with the Bible, the Saul in the Bible who had a road to Damascus mm-hmm. experience mm-hmm. and had a a real life changing transformation. Yep. That was Ivan's story. I mean, he went literally that night. It was like it was like the slate was wiped clean, and from that point on, he never, by his choosing. He never had another drop of alcohol, another pinch of tobacco, didn't take another drug. I mean, cleaned his whole life up. Went on to become an ordained minister. What made you invite him? Just Why? What made you invite him? Did he he, he have been asking about things like, you know? No, no, it's just, I just felt, Hmm. I just felt, you know, really just felt the Lord impress it upon my heart. Like, Hmm. you need to call Ivan and and, and invite him. And part of the inspiration is in having traveled with him on the road. Okay. And knowing, if you want to say, his lifestyle, okay, and the things that he was doing, mm. uh, like the things I just mentioned, yeah, I, I just in my heart of hearts, I'm, I was like, I, I need to call Ivan and, and invite him. I, I didn't know that he would come. I, I really didn't even think he would come. But when you ever, if you've ever heard his tes- testimony, his story about that, he'll tell you after I called him, just something in his heart said. I need to go. Mm. If it if it means that you know if it means a lot to he used to call me Nikki. He was one of the few who called me Nikki. Okay. Yeah, and he said if 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 Nikki is going to take the time to invite me, then 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 I need to go. And he said there he said there was just this compelling draw inside of him right. to go. Right. And so that was 1995, and so. All those years, like he used to do a lot of autograph signings and stuff, like the Walmart for the Children's Miracle Network and everything. At every anywhere and everywhere he went after that, like he there'd be his eight by tens and there'd be his Bible, mm. a- and he he wouldn't necessarily bring it up, but if a fan came and brought it up, he he would he would just open right up and just start sharing how you know how Jesus changed his life and how much that Bible meant to him and. And just have conversations. So we were talking in the car also about your wrestling career and Ivan. And something that you said in it, passing through the conversation, we were talking about, God, if you only would have came to the World Wrestling Federation and Ivan could have came with you. But the one thing you said is you didn't think Ivan would have come. Why? Well, I, you know, I, I don't know. It, it probably falls in line with this, the same question people ask me or comment on social media and other things as uh, why isn't he in the Hall of Fame for the WWE? I, I don't know the answer to that. And my guess is what what whatever happened in the past, and the, uh, there's got to be something, uh, obviously something that yeah. happened. Mm-hmm. That's kept him out of the Hall of Fame, Something whatever that reason is. Yeah. That same reason probably would have prevented him from being invited in, back, you know, back up there, back to the WWE. Did he ever share with you any problems with Vince McMahon Jr.? No, we never. I mean, that, we weren't talking about WWF, man. We were talking about NWA and mm-hmm. and Rock and Roll Express and Road Warriors, and we 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 we're looking at what's in front of us, not. Yeah, not the competition. But, so, but as a wrestler, and you know, now that there's only really one game in town, I know AEW is coming around and NWA Power is trying to do their little their thing there. Um, now wrestlers say New York was the pinnacle. When you got there, that's when you knew you made it. Is that what you felt, or, or did you not feel that at all? Didn't feel that at all. I mean, um, I'd say it was some pretty good competitive days between WWF and NWA and 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 once we started going head to head like for example i mean i can clearly remember going to philadelphia they were at the spectrum and we were at the civic center we had 10,000 people they had 10,000 people mm-hmm. yep. i mean head to head we we had one opportunity um to go to landover to the cap center over the 4th over a 4th of of july and i want to say 87 i i think july of 87 um I'm almost positive it's July of '87, and and the main event was the Superpowers and the Road Warriors against the Four Horsemen. Mm. And 
everyone was kind of surprised we got in there because you know Vince had a lock on a lot of the a lot of the buildings, and so even to get in there, he at that point he he had to give the building permission for, and I, I the way I understand the story, he didn't he didn't think we we're going to draw over, you know over that holiday or whatever. So he wanted to embarrass you, probably, right? I, yeah, uh, but we packed we we packed that place out with with twenty three thousand people, and Good and cursing. yeah. We, they never sat down for that eight man tag match the whole mm. entire time. I, I mean they imagine. and and Dusty and I, you know, as the superpowers, I mean, anywhere we went for a couple of years once we formed the superpowers did sell basically sell out business. Combine that with the Road Warriors, combine that with the four well, horsemen. Th- then I have to apologize to my partner here because we're on the way to pick you up, we were having a conversation and Who's I gonna was apologize. Ta- I was talking about how Nikita Koloff, the heel yeah, was one of the most incredible heels ever, and I yes. felt that the face turn, even though it was necessary because the Cold War was not it was beneficial awesome. to the character. It was awesome. He, okay. on the other hand, said no. He was never hotter than when he yeah, was he a is. face. Would you feel that the Pharaoh is correct? Well, you I, were I old, guess, dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> they loved you. <laughs> Initially, people lo- did love to hate me. That's true. I mean. I had six different six different matches where fans jumped the barricade and came in came after me, uh, came in t- attempted to get in the ring after me. A couple of them succeeded. Um, Ivan and I had death threats, you know, at the, at the at the Jim Crockett office. Were you the fellow who got clocked with a spark plug in Puerto Rico or something like that, or was that somebody uh, else? That's, that's me. You? That's you. Yeah. Spark plug in Puerto Rico. Yeah, great. Uh, it's great. crazy. You just I just <laughs> told that story. We. Luger and I just finished a man camp. We had a guy from Puerto Rico, and, and I just told that story of being hit in the arm with a spark plug, <laughs> cut cut my arm open. That's how much they love me in Puerto Rico. Oh. And, uh, and and so I, I will say this: I, I am thankful that I got to experience both sides. Yeah. Now the interesting thing is, and I'll 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 inject this part of the story. If Magnum TA hadn't had his accident, I get asked, would you have turned babyface? I, I doubt it. Mm-hmm. I can't say for certain, mm-hmm. 100%. But my guess would be probably not. Right. Because Magnum was being groomed for to be the next Ric Flair. He and I already had incredible chemistry, especially from the best of seven with the U.S. Right. belt. Mm-hmm. And so most likely, him and I would have had several years run back and forth as world champions uh, because we just had that chemistry. Mm. So the fact that I end up deciding or or they gave me the the choice of of teaming with Dusty, I I only saw that one as a positive thing to to be with somebody as popular as he was um, and the fact that he had, you know, creative control of things. And now, did we know? Someone asked him uh, prior to his passing. Did he know that? He, you know, was he confident? Did he know that that angle would that story would get over so well? And, and truthfully, you know, he said, "No, no, yeah, none right. of none of us really had any idea." Couldn't imagine. Mm-hmm. You know, a Russian becoming a good guy, yeah, right? No. Right, right. And so you tried we, it though. Uh, yeah, well, and we were pleasantly surprised that. Ballsy. That the fans, well, <clears throat> and, and kind of to to that point, of, I was one. The time, if you're going to turn, the time turns when you're when you're the hottest heel. That's mm. the time to turn, right? And so, I think I can think back in in the Charlotte Coliseum that night to the fans, the same fans who, thirty days before, one month before, I mean, hated my mm. guts. Oh yeah. And now I'm looking around this arena. And they got their shirts off. They're doing the pose. Going They're nuts. sticking their tongues out. There, I'm like, okay, I, I think this might work. Well, thank God they make. Did they make? They didn't make them. Thank God they didn't make you a full horseman. That would have been terrible. No, no, I wouldn't have. That wouldn't have fit the narrative. So here's something I I heard uh, on the Jim Cornette's podcast. You know, he's talking about when you first started off, right? You're hitting the gas. You're, you're super huge, right? You, you know, you never broke kayfabe with the boys, and you didn't cash a check from the organization for one year. So what's the question? What? Were you, what really, that that were you, were you really that into it, man? 
You're that into it, huh? Like, it, it, suppose, like, Arn Anders would be like, you with the boys, and you were like... And that your mother, I guess, worked at the bank. What? Yeah. And I then, don't know about this. No, 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 she didn't work at the bank. Okay. Oh, okay. So what's the story? <laughs> He's smiling. <laughs> I, I mean, the numbers are all over the map as far as, <laughs> as far as, as far as the length of time without cash in a check. Okay. What? The CPA for Jim Crockett came to me. I, I wasn't even the my, car parking attendant was still looking for a cause. Huh? Oh, the CPA. Oh, the certified. I thought you said car parking attendant. <laughs> Never mind. I thought we were still looking for our car. So, <laughs> my mindset was business. Okay. Like when I broke in, it. it it was about business for me. I, I from day one, right. I'm a business guy. Right. So I, 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 my approach was business mindset. Um, hence, I hired a business manager. I, th- I think one of the very first guys to, interesting, ever do that. Okay. And uh, my, one of my best friends, Tim Peltier. So I hired Tim, and and I said, hey Tim, I, I said, man, I'm gonna. Everything's coming to you. My checks. Well, I'll I'll give you a little backstory. But my checks. You know, you're gonna pay my rent. You're gonna pay my electric. My phone. You're gonna pay my gas. A- any any bills I got, they're all they're all coming to you. You're get, you're gonna take care of everything. I got, I'm gonna focus on wrestling and and building the story and building my character and all that. And so. Started studying the Russian language a little bit to put a few phrases together. Um, so, learned to sign my name in Russian. And I thought, if I'm going to get this character over, um, I'm not going to talk to anybody in the dress room, outside the dress room, unless I absolutely have to talk to somebody. I'm fi- in fact, it was Mark Merrill told me a story uh, just a while back when he first came into the NWA territory, the... Um, uh, Johnny B. Bad, he was wrestling with us. He goes, dude, he goes, I got to tell you, he goes, I've never told you this, but when we first came in, he goes, first of all, half of us were scared to death of you. Mm-hmm. Like, that guy, could, that guy could, like, rip your head off. He goes, and then you're talking in your char- in character in the dress rooms, and we're, like, looking at each other, whispering, going, does he know we're, like, smart to the business? Does he, does he, does he know what? I thought you were nuts. In fact, oh, in fact, I know you guys had demolition on. That's right. Um. Crusher Khrushchev. Right? Crusher Khrushchev. But before he was Crusher, he was out in Louisiana with Nikolai Volkov. Uh-huh. And so when we brought him up to the Carolinas to become Crusher Khrushchev, he's like, dude, I got to, he goes, he goes, I should have known. He goes, we're, we we heard in Louisiana that they had to shoot Russian up in the Carolinas. And we're like, oh, wow, that's amazing. And I come find out it's you. And I'm like, why didn't I know that? Mm. Why? Because I'm just that guy. I'm if I'm going to do something, I'm all in. I'm 100% in, right? I'm not doing, going to do anything half-baked. So I'm focused on wrestling, and I, and I think at the time they, they paid us weekly, I think. And so, you know, I'd, I'd get my check, and I, I, there was really no urgency. I'm a, I'm a what my sister would call a very frugal guy. And so, I, you know, I, I would spend what I'd need to spend in order to eat and live and that sort of thing. And so I had money in my pocket, so I didn't see any need to cash a check, so I just throw it in my closet shelf. And then at one point, Dave is the, was the guy's name, the CPA, came to me at one point, and, and I don't even know how, many, how long it was, but the bottom line was, he says, cash your checks. I go, Dave, what are you talking about? He goes, cash your checks you're screwing up my accounting all my bookkeeping and everything i go how am i doing he goes because you haven't cashed your checks cash your checks so and i don't know i went i don't know maybe i had a year's worth two years worth <laughs> six months worth that? I, wow i don't need to cash I, this I, 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 don't, I don't know how do you do that but it was enough i had enough uncashed oh checks to screw up his books let's right. just put it that way right and then, and then it was fast forward. Um, at, at that point, I just had everything sent to Tim, 
and Tim just handled yeah. everything. Were, were you playing? And I got an all, allowance. Were you, besides in the locker room where they clearly thought you were batshit crazy talking to you in the Russian, were you doing this on the streets too to like, you know, you go through a drive through and do an MJF? I said a number two, you stupid! Well, I can't do the Russian. I wish you would. But uh, did you ever, were you taking it that far? I, once I developed the accent, je to it. Give me what a that. What was that? Big man. I just almost heard it. <laughs> Once I developed the oh, he teased me. Go on. That's not right. Anyway, you that's always leave. You always leave them hanging, oh, wanting that was, more. That there was just a little whisker hair. Go on. <laughs> Anyway. Once I develop the accent. <laughs> and by the way, folks, he's been asking for this I'm, accent for the last... All day! The guy won't just, give it to me! He wanted anyway. a car at uh, the event. All day. day! Yeah, would you do the Russian accent? Would you do the Russian You make you, me sound like such a... I was doing YouTube, that, YouTube. Anyway. YouTube. Oh, um, dear God. Once I develop the accent. Okay. Once I actually learned English. Okay. <laughs> it's tough. It's It started speaking. Um, again... I made the decision that I was going to live it at anywhere in public. So okay, so, so anywhere in public <laughs> anywhere would mean anywhere in grocery public. store it would mean a movie theater, it would mean a restaurant, an airplane. It would <sighs> it would mean it would mean being pulled over by the cops. In fact, oh my God, what? I was telling this story the other day. <laughs> What's he doing? So I screen test for Rocky Four. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's in here somewhere. That's in. Come on. Yep. Go ahead. Yeah. Nice. So it's Dolph Lundgren and I out on the set with Stallone and Kerry Young and Kerry Von Erich, yeah. Yeah, he, he was, it was between, really, it was between Dolph and Nikita. Kerry. Yeah, I'm not seeing. Kerry's that. first question to me was, are, "Are there some lines we're supposed to like?" I'm like, <laughs> "Dude, you will lose." Cut. That's terrible. No, that was like, well, my the odds of me getting this role just went up from thirty three percent to fifty. Right. Oh yeah. I think for higher. Sure. Well, even well, yeah, that's true. Fifty Dolph was, fifty Dolph now. Was still in a damn room. Yeah. Carrie, go on. Carrie, thank right. you for not knowing your lines. <laughs> you increased my odds at this point. Uh, Here's the point: with Sylvester Stallone or anyone else on that set, limousine drivers, or I never broke character. Even for the screen test. Wow. I just stayed in Nikita Koloff character for the screen test, including conversations with Stallone. Oh, boy. Off camera. Yo, he's nuts. Take Dolph. All right, now, can, now, can, now, to your question, here, here. answer your question. Wow. I never wow. Three years after I left wrestling. I stayed in character. All right, so wait a minute. Ooh, you come, wow. come home to your wife. You come home to your wife. Are you in character? That's, pu what? that's not no. public. Huh? Yeah, no. That's not public. Right. He's in okay, public. so what did I say? At home with yeah. family. Anything in, in private, private. In private. Right. Good. Was good. good. Anything good. in private. Now, when the older girls the were you... little, yeah. Okay. I was in character around them because I didn't want them to go to school. They're in elementary school. Gotcha. And, and kids are going to go, is your dad really Russian? And they're kids. They're going to yeah, go, yeah, yeah, yeah. what are you talking about? Right. He, right. he speaks English, you right. know, whatever. So I, I stayed in character for a while with them until but, I felt they were old enough to understand. Then why did you stay in character with the boys then? That wasn't public, right? You're in a plane. You're all hanging out, right? We're not always on private planes. We're on commercial planes. Okay. Or... That's business, though. That's part of his character. Yeah, and, 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 in lo in and in locker rooms, it's not always just the boys. Security would come in. Gotcha. And different people would oh, okay. come in. Yeah, and, sure, sure, sure. So, Moppy mopping the floor, he's yeah. in there. Okay. And it wasn't 100% of the time. I, I I, was conscious of my surroundings. I understand. So, Or there was new guys that came, like Mark Merrill, when he came, I'm like, I don't, I don't know how long this cat's going to last. I don't know. All right, mm. we got about three more minutes before we go to the auction. All right. I appreciate you coming in, Nikita. Farrow's going to hit you with one more question. Oh, sure. Why don't we ask you about uh, the, the legendary Jim Crockett? Thoughts on Jim Crockett? Yeah, absolutely have thoughts on Jim. I'm grateful and thankful for to the entire Crockett family um, for giving me my break. Uh, if it wasn't for Jim taking a chance on me, there wouldn't be a, a Nikita Koloff. And he believed in me. I find that I'm a... Uh, I'm I'm loyal sometimes to a fault, okay. but I'm a I'm a loyal guy to to people, and so I was loyal to Jim Crockett. I probably could have went to New York and made who knows ten times, hundred times the amount of money. Um, it's it's not always been about the money for me. Uh, my my integrity and 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 loyalty is is most important or very important to me, and so 
I felt the this I just really felt this loyalty to the NWA, to Jim Crockett for giving me my break and was willing to forego a bigger paycheck or a bigger payday uh, just to line my own pockets uh, in support of the organization that gave me a chance. And you made a good living at WCW. It wasn't like, you know. I mean, I didn't, yeah, I, I didn't make, I didn't. I didn't make anywhere near, you know, what, what guys like a, made, yeah, uh, even not long number. after I retired. Um, but I, I did, I did decent. I mean, I didn't cash any checks, so I mean, I did. You didn't even have to cash his checks. I did, I did, I did okay. You know, I, yeah. I would say I, I didn't make millions, and and to where I could s- sail off into the sunset. Okay, sure. But sure. But I made more than I ever would have doing anything else that I might did, have done. Did Vince okay. or Pat Patterson ever try to touch base with you to just see where you were at at any point? No, I met Vince in Las Vegas. Again, a head-to-head show in Las Vegas. Bumped into him in the gym out there in Vegas. Very cordial, very polite. Had a you know. Who's a... bigger, you or Vince? Oh, interesting. I'd say his bank account is much bigger. Come on, he got you. Size wise, muscle wise, good was, answer. Who that was, was bigger? Was I'd Who's say like... his bank account is much bigger. Oh man! Well, at the time, it, how big was I, Vince's guns? Come on! I, 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 big, he's a big I have guy. no clue, but at the time we met, I was two eighty five, eight percent body fat with a thirty four oh, inch waist. He's so Vince, Vince had I, water pistols. I don't know what he might have weighed at that time, but <laughs> but very cordial conversation, and you know, had nothing to do with business. It's just, it was just, uh, just a, uh, just a cordial conversation. Um, Did you talk? Were you Russian when you were talking? Uh, to oh, him? Uh, well, absolutely, of course. That's great. So you, that's I awesome. Mean, I'm, I'm oh that's consistent. That is great. That's business. I, I'm in the it's, gym. I'm not. I'm not breaking kayfabe anywhere. I'm right. in the gym. Right. And, and, is he uh, holding a straight straight face with you or what? Oh yeah. Wow. But oh, didn't yeah. you ever wonder about the possibilities? And we talked about this on the right over here. You had Hulk Hogan over there. You're a Russian heel. We had Sergeant Slaughter over there. You're a Russian heel. Did you ever think about the possibilities back in those days at all? Like, man, I, I was, I was flattered by the by the the promotion of you know Pro Wrestling Illustrated, Bill Apter, and all the magazines and stuff really were touting Hogan, Koloff, Hogan, Koloff. Right. And so it was certainly flattering to 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 see that touted in the magazines. But I, I can honestly tell you there wasn't a day or a night where I was, you know, either a day daydreaming or having a dream at night about, ooh, well, you know, right. it's so great to wrestle Hulk Hogan. Right. You know, I was thrilled and happy for what they were doing. I was thrilled and happy for what we were doing. Sure. And and I was just, we had a great crew. I mean, when I look at Flair, Steamboat, the Road Warriors, mm. uh, I mean, just go down the list of guys, eventually Sting, Luger, I mean, we had a great crew. Arn, Tully, Ole. I mean, we had such a great crew that worked hard together to build a brand and build a product that that we believed the fans just absolutely loved. Um, again, that there was no entertaining any idea. E- even 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 Barry. So when he was Custer Khrushchev, and I will say this, when he told me he was going to go to New York, you know, Rizzi said, "We, you know, go with me, be my partner. And I'm like, ah, I go, Barry, man, I worked so hard on building the Nikita Koloff character that I really don't want to go change characters. Um, you know, kudos to you, and I'm sure, I know that'll work out. I'm sure it'll work out for you. You're a hard worker. Um, but I'm just, I'm Barry, I'm just not interested. That was, if there was any discussion it was with Barry. The other part I was going to tell you when you asked if Pat Patterson or any of the rest of them called me. You know, it was the back in the days of answer machines, right? I guess I'd say this: either I missed the voicemail if they did try to, if they did try to reach out and, and contact, or they just never left the message. Right. So. Did you have Russian on your uh, voice tape on your answer machine too? <laughs> this is Probably. <laughs> That's great. Real quick before we end the show, your Mount Rushmore professional wrestlers. Ooh. Wow. You only got four faces to Fa- work with. Favorite. Oh, uh, Mount Rushmore. You Mount Rushmore. Four, four, four you, you faces. Want, you want me four guys I enjoy working with, or what? Or what? Whoever, how, you, whoever you think is. Well, how about Mount this? Rushmore. How about your definitive opinion of who the four faces that best represent pro wrestling should be on that re- Mount Rushmore? Jeez. If you had to pick four. Jeez. Uh, yeah, I know. Two that. Uh, 
Okay, well. Go for it. Ric Flair, Ricky Steamboat, Animal, and Hawk. There oh, you nice. Wow. It's Very good. not so bad, man. That's not great. bad. Flair give you your favorite match of your career? I've read that in places. Any truth to that, you and Flair? Uh, I, I thoroughly enjoyed working with Rick. Um, I say it all the time. He can make a broomstick look good. He made Nikita Koloff look good. He was one of the consummate professionals. I, I was fortunate to be in the ring with a lot of oh. incredible guys. I mean, Dory Funk Jr., Black Jack Mulligan, mm. in the Carolinas, legendary Johnny Weaver. Mm. I mean, I, Wahoo McDaniel. Mm-hmm. I mean, I was fortunate. Larry Zabisco. There were so many guys. Rick Rude. I just go down the list of guys that that helped. Really were instrumental in helping build my character and build, building me into who I became didn't do it by myself i still had to carry the ball but but a number of these guys were instrumental and of course obviously dusty and 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 then ultimately jim crockett again for giving me that that ultimate break i'll tell you what as a viewer watching all those years ago we had no clue you were new when you first came in you ascended like a meteor and you had one of the best yeah. damn runs i can remember so thank you for coming on. with that thank you for coming on uh stay Appreciate tuned it, for nikita koloff on captain's corner we're going to do a uh Live auction, Nikita will be signing photos for fans and a whole bunch of other stuff. But by the way, catch Monty Nefaro on YouTube, Monty Nefaro page, Facebook Live, Monty Nefaro page, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Anchor. Channel 115 every Tuesday from 7 to 7.30. Nice. And every Saturday from 6 a.m. to 6.30. And Channel 20 on Friday at 2 in the morning, from 2 in the morning to 2.30. Once again, Nikita, thank you. And uh, hope to see you soon. Guys. It's been a pleasure to be here with you. Thank you. And uh, we'll try to find the car so we can get you out of here later. I hope so. Later.